Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany. How are you? We do knitting podcasts, yarn corners, fiber arts related vlogs, anything on this channel related to knitting. And today we are going to be doing the highly, highly requested everything I knitted in 2022. I cannot wait to film this video and see kind of how I've progressed through my knitting and just seeing everything I've knitted this year. Like I was like skimming through the 2021 everything I knitted and it's like wild to think that I've knitted so many more things like used so many more fibers it's just such a crazy thing to look back on and I think it's really nice to share this all with you guys and you can see everything I've knitted and we can reminisce along the year together so thankfully I have actually made a whole list of all the projects that I started each month so I know kind of what I was doing or else there's no way I could keep track. It has been such a crazy end to the year. We did the Winter Magic ending collection. I'm just finishing dyeing up all of the Pure Imagination collection so thank you everyone for being so patient with me. It has been such a crazy end of the year and I'm so blessed and so thankful for everyone's support. Like it's so, I don't know how to thank you all and it's just been such a wild ride and I cannot wait for what 2023 will bring. We're manifesting good energy we're gonna leave all the bad things behind and we're going to hopefully enjoy more new knits in the future i like cannot wait to see what i knit for 2023 and then do another one of these videos i don't know we just love yearly reflections so starting off in september so i technically started these last year but didn't finish them until this year which is totally fine in september i started both the jenny jacket and the november jacket who who was I? Who was I to think, oh, let me just tackle like five out of fives, the most difficult petite knit pieces like ever within the same month at the same time. Um, who knows how I was able to finish it, but I think it took me like four months to actually do it, which actually feels like not a lot of time. <laughs> we'll start off with her. This is my, oh, look at this try on. I better look so cute in these. Okay, so this is, oh my gosh, okay. So this is my Jenny jacket. This is the patterning, oh my goodness gracious. I love the smock design, it just is so beautiful. I just feel like I look so elegant and dainty in this guy. It is for sure one of the pieces that I feel like I cherish the most. It just feels like such a, like such a crazy piece that I don't deserve her and I don't deserve to like wear her out too often because she's just like so like elegant and beautiful. I love putting it up all the way to the very top. I don't know, she's just everything to me. I feel so, I feel like a proper girl. <laughs> and sometimes you just need a sweater that just makes you feel like really just like elegant and like dainty and just, uh Those are like the words I use all the time, but like, you know what I mean? Like it just makes me feel, special and I want that in all my sweaters like I feel like every sweater I want I want them to make me feel really good this is knitted in whack baby alpaca in the cream and I, I think I added just a random mohair from color mart and I love her she was a difficult beast to conquer I was really questioning my life choices when we had to do the arm separately and then you do the body and then you combine and knit the yoke and I hate that so much it just feels like such a struggle to get to the top but like now looking back like even though it was really difficult I enjoyed knitting this guy this one guy was like so nice and I made it with a baby alpaca which I feel like is really soft so every time I would like pick up the needles with like a wooden needle it just felt really nice that's all I can say it just felt really nice to knit and I look so good in this piece. So I highly recommend it. I think people have been asking me like, would you ever do the Jenny sweater? Or like, which one do you, you think I should do? The Jenny sweater or the Jenny jacket? I, it's so hard to say. I think they're both really nice looks. I think the Jenny sweater would be obviously easier because this guy had to do like the pearl, the backside and it was redonkulous. But I think I just like the look that I can open it and then close it. Okay, so next, this is the November jacket. Again, most of these pieces, I'm not gonna lie, are just my favorite things that were, or petite knit, so sorry. That's just who I was this year, and it probably will be who I am. There's just so many pieces and I just have to like conquer them all, okay? I hope you understand. So this is the November 
jacket again beast like a literal beast I don't know who I thought I was just being so ambitious for um, 2022 I don't know how I finished this guy this guy super long it goes kind of like near my butt I knitted this in a small I think I knitted the other one in a small as well that's just my common <laughs> size for fatigue knit she's in brioche and if you guys know brioche is a dangerous stitch to do I I told myself that I would not like not do brioche in a really long time after this guy because it was just like a battle it was just like a battle between me and myself and like I wasn't winning and then having to do like don't get me wrong this is like one of those pieces where I feel like it looks machine made it does not look like I made this myself like the just like I don't know even the pocket I was just like mesmerized by how beautiful and seamless it looked like the double knit for the gorgeous borders it's just okay why is there a sticker um it's just perfect it just everything just culminated beautifully in this cardigan and we know that patina just like is coming out with an agnete cardigan which is a brioche which is in three millimeters this guy is only in four and i thought i was dying <laughs> so I don't know but then every time I put this guy on I look at myself and I think this is the most beautiful thing I've ever made in my entire life nothing can even compare to this piece it just is so perfect like I look I look I look good um <laughs> I knitted this in whack equal Lana yarn it was just like the only dupe I could find for the yarn that's only in Denmark like it just seems so inaccessible to me from here in Canada so this was the dupe that I found and it was pretty good I feel like this guy is probably a little more pilly than if you just were to knit this in like a normal like yarn because this is like a one ply it just gives like a more I guess rustic look to it it's more like I don't know more it looks more felted I would say is a good way to felted and fluffy and I like that it makes me feel really like really cool I will say I wish I knitted this in a medium I was kind of on the fence about making it um, with more stitches because I was not willing to because I do feel like it could be a bit baggier and I feel like I would have liked the more baggier look I just made it a little bit smaller and then stretched it but I don't know I, I don't know if I would have been willing to do that because like this brioche was wild like having to do brioche in the round you'd think would be like all fun and games but you have to like alternate I don't know if I want to do that to myself again but I have to I have to and I am worried about my mental health <laughs> but she's gorgeous I love her she's like everything to me and I need to stop talking about it uh, I will just bring in accessories as well I made the French market bag I made it with like random strands that I got from the leftover mystery yarn that I got from color mart and thankfully it came out really nice honestly I kind of want to do this stitch again and it would be so fun to make another bag but I don't know if I really need another one of these bags maybe in black but seems a little excessive I have just the petite knit leather straps because how not and I put my project bag in here because I just think it looks really nice and it has like a closure at least so it just feels nice we like it we like it a lot another bag this is the Technicolor tote bag I just made it she's really basic with just some I've been really trying to use up my Ecolana yarn because like I have too much of it I bought the little girl tag that comes like that she does with the pattern and I think it just makes it look really put together I think the color combos that I chose are really nice like I really like the gray on the outside and like it's like dark in the middle it's everything to me I probably will like sew an inner lining because I feel like it might just like droop a little bit and I would like it to keep its composure so these are the pieces that i actually started in 2022 that's hilarious we started okay so we started the oslo sweater in 2022 at the beginning of the year and i swear i just finished it which is like the kind of scary part so this is my oslo sweater 
Oh my gosh, look at this navy. I will forever love this piece with a white turtleneck. It's like my everything. I made this with a whack finita yarn in the navy and I did uh, mohair, uh, the knitting for olive navy mohair and it's just a perfect piece. I honestly love the construction of the Oslo sweater. I think if you're just looking for a really, if you want like the perfect construction of a sweater, I would say it is the Oslo sweater. The Oslo sweater is like my favorite. I love the drop down um, shoulders. I love the border around the neck. It's just really perfect. You can knit it with a lace yarn and a mohair and I think it would look beautiful. Personally, just really like it. If you want like a really basic, like kind of thinner sweater and you want like a really nice construction, this is it. I would love to make it in like a black and I would love to make it in a cream, but do we have the time? No, we don't. Um, I love wearing this. It's also really warm. Like I wore this in like negative 20 degree weather with like just like a normal puffer jacket and I was warm the entire time and it was beautiful and I love her and she is like a staple in my wardrobe. I just think it's like the perfect navy and I will forever be looking for more perfect navy stuff. I have down here that I made the I made the Wednesday sweater, but I actually unraveled it. I didn't really like, I think I made it in like a medium and it still wasn't big enough. I was like, I was like, this does not look like the petite knit version that she has in her, I guess, store. So I unraveled it. I didn't love the look of it. So I actually used that yarn and made the Moby sweater, which I made in, or I guess I started in August. I guess I'll wear that and show it off now, even though we made this like kind of later on, but oh my gosh, like this cream in the navy you can see i i think i made a lot of cream stuff this year <laughs> cream and beige were me this year i think we need to do more like grays dark grays a charcoal a black i think that's what we're moving towards i think instead of a cream i really want to make like a light light like almost white gray sweater so hopefully we can manifest and then I can make like bright colored sweaters like I've been dreaming of because of the Pure Imagination collection. Anyway, oh goodness gracious. Okay, so this is my Moby sweater. This is just how it looks like. The construction is just very Christmassy. You got the cables, the faux cables. It's like very similar on the arms. I knitted this in Drops Lima and one strand of just a random mohair. I just find random mohairs everywhere. I think I'm just a collector of random sweater quantity mohairs that I will just incorporate into any sweater. So this guy is just like my Christmas, beautiful, gorgeous um, winter holidays. I look like I was meant to be in a Christmas movie and they miscast me. So I just think she's gorgeous. I knitted this, I think in the small as well, but would have loved to do it in the medium. I think the fit is just not, baggy and then sometimes like I feel like I was kind of wanting like Chris Evans knives out baggy kind of like a fisherman sweater but no it's fine like this guy's just like a little tight but I think this with like like a schoolgirl skirt <laughs> and like tights and loafers is like a really cute look so maybe we'll do some styling videos in the future because I feel like I just have more sweaters to style up. This is her, we love her. I knitted this, this is my baby, this is my COVID sweater. When I had COVID, this is like literally all I did. And I think it ruined my wrists and I still talk about it to this day because I feel like I was super ambitious, <laughs> like knitting the Jenny jacket, knitting the November jacket, knitting this guy. I knitted the Ingrid sweater. Like we were like really pushing my hands to the limit and I feel like Hopefully this year we can be a little bit more tame. We can be a little bit more um, thinking about me and my hands, but still enjoying the process of knitting and just being not so harsh on me. But now I have this beautiful sweater, so how can I complain? I guess I will then quickly just talk about, or not quickly. No, let's be straight, straight up. This is not gonna be quick. This is my Ingrid sweater. I wear this guy like to death. And I feel like people don't hype it up as much as like they want to hype up the Moby sweater, but like this guy is still one of the loves of my lives. Like I don't know why I love the neckline. It's just like a really nice mock turtleneck and I don't know. It just like 
the perfect amount of bagginess. I feel like this guy is a bit more baggy than the Moby sweater, given the fact that they're both knitted in the small. And I just love the construction. Like you have just the most beautiful, I'm a, a sucker for her double ma stitch. I just feel like it adds just like an extra amount of like, detail that I feel like not a lot of sweaters have. So I just like really love her. She's like my baby and it, she keeps me warm and I love pairing this with like a cream coat and like cream pants. All I need are some cream shoes and it's just like such a look. This guy I knitted in one strand, tennis garn, light beige. Um, I think I just had some drops kid silk light beige and then one strand random strand of um fingering weight yarn from color mart it's absolutely insane thinking like thinking that i remember every single yarn that i use for every single piece it's just like such a memory and such a moment in my life where i was knitting that and really knowing the material i don't know that seems like so weird to think about because I could look at every single one of my pieces and I'll know exactly what fiber I used. So, um, yeah, we love her and I need to stop. I think this is like my beige moment. I can't have any more beige. This is like ridiculous. I will just talk about the guy that I just finished. She will be, she will be discussed in the December knitting corner. Um, but I finished, guys, guys. I finished my Fuyuhi sweater. I know, this is the year of finishing things. <laughs> I don't know what came over me. I just felt like this guy needed to be finished and it was not bad because you're knitting it in like six millimeters and it feels like time goes by so quickly. So maybe next year I'll knit in bigger needles. Hopefully, I swear. The issue is, is I can't tell where I did the shaping so I don't know which is the back or the front. So we will just have to wear it. So I made this, or I guess I started this in February. Ugh. I have yet to block it, which is the issue, but I don't care, I'll, I'll block it in a moment. But you will get to see how she looks like in the moment. I think the blocking will definitely make it um, maybe fit a little better, so just be a little weary when you see me on this right now, but ah, I love the look of how, the, I don't know what this is called, like the zigzags. I love that they form like this perfect, like half circle. I just feel like this piece is crazy. It's like one of my only like color work pieces. I'm not like a huge color work person, but it's growing on me. I think I'm into it and I kind of want to make more, but uh, we'll have to see the time and effort I'm willing to put into a piece. But yeah, I used Plotaloopy from Iztec. I think it's Iztec. I just know Plotaloopy. Um, and she's really itchy. I will say that, but she's fine because I'm wearing this turtleneck and I feel like I will be warm for ages. I feel like I could wear this out and nothing can hurt me. Absolutely nothing can hurt me. I am indestructible in this sweater and I feel like, oh my God, I feel like I'm in a 70s like commercial and I need that. I need that in my life. I'm wearing like jeans, like really baggy jeans. I wish you could see it, it's okay. You just, you just understand the vibe. I'm so glad I finished this. This was like, I was like frantically trying to knit this up to finish at the end of the year and we did it. And it's in this video and I'm really happy about it. Gucci gang. Also the smell of Plotaloopy is like my favorite thing. I don't want to be like absolutely insane, but I could smell this forever. <laughs> okay, moving on. I don't know what happened to March, but in April we started I don't know when we finished the Sunday cardigan mohair. I have not, look, look at me. I have not weaved in any of the ends. I have not done absolutely anything to this guy. Okay, I honestly, I need to do something. Either I'm going to have to unravel and make this longer, but she's just kind of short. I want her to be really, really baggy. This is my Sunday cardigan. I have been dreaming about this guy, I think, 
when I first started knitting. I just saw like mohair and like instantly fell in love with it. And I really, uh, she was just a fast knit. I will say I maybe didn't love six millimeter and seven millimeter with mohair, but it gives it a really nice, just like fluffy feel to it versus like the novice cardigan, which is more tight and more structure. This, I wanted it to be like very loose. I'm hoping that I can stretch it a little so she can like really be baggy and lovely. I think I knitted this in the medium, but I'm, I'm needing this guy a little longer so we don't know what to do. <laughs> I knitted this, I think, in one strand. Um, oh gosh, I think I used one strand Sun is Scarn Tin Silk Mohair. I have a random strand, I think, of white mohair, and this third one, I think it's also a random strand from Color Mart. I got like a weird beige one and then a white one, and then I think I'm using putty um, for the tin silk mohair, and that is the three strands we are using. Did that destroy my wallet? Absolutely, but what? can I do? She is gorgeous. Next we're going on to more summery pieces I guess. I don't know where she came from. Ignore the fact that I'm putting this over a turtleneck but just like understand. So this is my cumulus. Oh oh I need to wear her out more. This is my cumulus tee. I knitted it in putty. Why is everything putty? Is it putty? Oh my gosh. I guess it's putty from Knitting for Olive in their Pure Silk. I think I got some of their yarn for one of her charity kind of events. So I just like bulked up and got like a billion yarns. Um, and this is this guy. It doesn't look great with its turtleneck, I will say, but just like imagine it just normally. Um, it is a perfect t-shirt. I think if I had the time and if I had the patience, I would make more of these. I personally have no idea how I did this. It's on three millimeters. I thought this went by so quickly. I literally didn't even have a thought in the world. I just did this. The, the body for some reason happened so fast. I don't know how. I don't know where I was in this moment in my life. But I just remember being like, this was easy. And then I just, I got so many like people telling me like, how did you finish that? Like it is taking me so long. So. I'm happy I enjoyed it. I don't know if I would enjoy doing it again, but I would love to do a, like a collared, not a collared, like a, what is it called? <laughs> Just like not a v-neck. So hopefully my plan is to make a no frill sweater, but make a cotton version in a smaller needle. And it could be like my, it could be like another t-shirt, so that is what I want. Okay, next, I think the cumulus top came out around this time, and so I made this with um, a silk that I got from, where's the front? I don't know if you can tell the front or the back. Okay, it's fine. Um, I made this in a silk that I got from Color Mart. It's just the cumulus. Oh, I love the cumulus top. The cumulus top is really nice, I will say. I'm not sure if I'm in love with this fabric or like if you can see it's like a yellow I just sometimes don't know if this yellow looks really good on my skin tone but like looking at this now it looks great maybe I just need like a cream pant or something to match this like perfectly um but like yeah I have to like wear like pasties or something or like a bralette because it's quite yeah, she's quite see-through this silk <laughs> which is not great um but oh, I guess wearing it like this is also kind of cute but yeah I Love this guy, would totally make it again. It is a quick piece, in my opinion, because like the triangles are quite short. Maybe just like the eye cord is a little annoying. I know people hate eye cord, like I made this too long, so these are knots, which I should really fix, but I am too lazy to. Yeah, the eye cord can be a little annoying, but I actually really like borders, like doing the double knitting border for like a cardigan, doing an eye cord is like my favorite thing. It just feels like the piece is like finally coming together and being like this much closer to the end. Just feels, it feels nice. Like that's why I like doing like the ribbing for like your armholes, the ribbing for your, your arms or the, like the body. Like I love doing that and like doing like the, uh, the Italian bind off with the tubular bind off. It's just, 
I feel like that's an unpopular opinion, but I will love it because it feels like the piece is finally coming together. Uh, this guy is a little bit low, I will say. I think I made it this, did I say, in the medium? Kind of low. So just be wary of your, of your um, string length is all I will say. And again, I love just this folded band. Folded band is everything. It's beautiful. And like to think last year, I didn't make like any like breathable <laughs> outfit pieces at all. So like this year, this summer, I feel like I was making like so many like cute little tank top stuff and it has made my life so much happier. Okay, now we're into May. I made this zipper sweater, which I will show. It is technically supposed to be for my boyfriend, but you know what, it's mine now. It's just mine now. I have no issues about never giving it to him ever, cause it's just like mine. It's just like perfect. It's everything. I know he won't cherish it as much as I do. Um, I love her. She is my basic queen. I know she looks kind of bland looking at her here. <laughs> like I feel like people seeing this will be like, oh, it's not that exciting. It's just like this black thing. I wish you could really see it a lot more. But I knitted this, I think in the large. No, medium? No. I think I made, okay, this is the men's. This is the men's zipper sweater. I think I made it in the medium. I'm so sorry if I'm wrong. Um, I made this zipper. Oh, you can't see it, the ribbing, beautiful, stunning. I just feel like, like my boyfriend has been looking for a zippered, like, like turtleneck like this. He's like, oh, I should get one from Patagonia. And I'm like, oh, I could just make you this, but I have, and I still have not given it to him. So it is just a mine. <laughs> I made this in Drops Nepal. I really like Drops Nepal. Like it is quite nice and I think it's a really nice cheap alternative if you're not really able to afford something a little bit more expensive. But I will say she's been pilling on me. Okay, you can't see. It's black. Why are you so difficult? Um, it's just been pilling a little bit right around my arms here. A little bit too much and I've only really worn this guy like a handful of times so oh my god i'm getting really warm in this yeah so it just feels it hurts because i put in so much effort and she shouldn't pill already but i will wear this forever i'll just get one of like a i'll get like a mechanical shearing thing um to just do more frequently because this guy will just be in my closet and it just feels i just don't know i don't know if i should give it to my boyfriend if it like pills all the time so i'm kind of like on the fence. Okay, in June, oh my goodness, gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I love how like, as the months change, so do the types of like things I knit. Oh my God. Okay, so we made the June top, which I now have to figure out where the back is. This is my June top. I love her. She's a little bit smelly because I wore her on vacation and I don't have the time to like hand wash her. Uh, but I knitted this in Noro Kakigori in Naha. It's my favorite thing. I am so obsessed. I do, I probably should, if I have time, make this in like a basic color, like a black I think would be so perfect just to have, just, it just looks like a really basic tank that I could rock all the time. And it's gorgeous. I love everything about her. Just, I need to make more Noro stuff. So hopefully I can do that. And it looks great when I have a tan. I don't know what more I can say about how glorious and beautiful this guy is. I have left over. I don't know what I will do with it, but it has to be something like a short. Should I make a short? Should I make a skirt? Oh my gosh, then I made Cami six. This is Cami six, right? Oh my God, no, this is Cami five. Oh my God, okay, sorry. Cami five I made in February. I did not talk about her, but she will be spoken about currently. This is like the epitome of beauty. I didn't know something could ever be so beautiful. I think if you haven't knitted this piece, where are you? But also if you don't like it, I totally get it. But like it is, this is like the prettiest piece. I love the ribbing, the ribbing, the double knitting. It is just a perfect, oh my gosh. And in Oh my gosh, in this, in this fennel seed, knitting for olive, merino, it is my favorite. It is so beautiful. I should make another one. Oh gosh, I don't have the time. 
I should make another one because I have some pure silk um, knitting for olive in like the the blackest of the black color. I should just make one without doing any of this ribbing and just do a stockinette and I think uh, I should do that. I should do that immediately. This thing makes me look so gorgeous. It was honestly really nice to make. I don't know. I think I have a really nice time knitting anything with the knitting for olive or just like or the sun is scar on Sunday. Just anything that's just like a single fingering weight yarn is sometimes really enjoyable on just like really small needles. It it is tedious, but I find very therapeutic. And what more can I say? She's a beauty. So sorry. There's so many numbers. You girl needs to not do the numbers. The numbers are so confusing. So this is Cami 6, which goes with shorts number one. I knitted this in a Noro Tenen or Kumo. I'm so sorry that I don't remember. And one strand, I think just like a Merino. A Merino. I think I knitted it in a Flora. A Grey Flora. Drops Grey Flora. I'm so sorry. And it just created this really nice, just weird like pattern. It's like not super... Um, like perfect, it's like a solid. It's like, uh, I, can't, I don't want to say variegated because that doesn't seem right either. So I made this and I made matching shorts with it because the shorts are gorgeous. And I had like the perfect amount to knit with. And it was, this guy I also really liked knitting. I felt the combo was really nice and really nice on the needles. And the color is like my favorite thing ever. Oh my gosh, like, to think how much my wardrobe has elevated since knitting all these things, it makes me very happy. Um, but yeah, just having like really unique pieces that I know no one will ever have, knowing that I made them myself, knowing that if I ever get a compliment, I will tell people that I have made these things. And just like, just like just low key feeling like I'm better than everyone because I'm making all my pieces myself. You know, like when I, I don't know, I just, there's just like this weird sense of accomplishment every time you make something and like wear it and just enjoy it. And I enjoy it. <laughs> oh my God, in June, I also did Cardi number eight. Okay, Cardi number eight, here we go. Oh my gosh, I was dreaming of this cardigan. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, stop, stop, guys, I... This is like my favorite. So this is uh, cardigan number eight. I actually really like the construction. If you're looking for like something that's similar to the champagne cardi, but you want to do it on bigger needles, highly recommend. Comes with pockets. We enjoy the pockets. I use Nora Madara, which I have been eyeing. I like. I think I saw it on Petite Knits Instagram, and instantly was like, yes, it needs to be like a full moment piece. I, anytime I like see something that's like a Noro and I really like the look, I have to have like a full garment of it. Um, as you can see with all like my little like sprinkles of Noro throughout the year. Um, and yeah, I just think it's really just honestly so beautiful. Uh, I used I think a random strand of mohair and it was perfectly fine, just like a beige one. Just yeah, like the speckles of like a red, the blue, the browns, it's just very... It's like neutral but like a statement but like it's also like kind of weird you know like I, I feel like I'm different <laughs> like I feel like not your average typical girl you know like not not everyone's gonna like this this is like an acquired taste <laughs> I knitted this guy so fast this guy was knitted up so fast I probably should have like enjoyed her a little bit more because you know like sometimes you just knit something a little bit too fast and you're like wait like I get that I have the product now but like I, like where did the time go? I feel like I didn't even get to spend any time with her <laughs> while she's being made. Like I should really stop personifying all of my knitted pieces, but like how could I not? Next we did Kemi 7. Ooh, July. Oh, we're moving fast here. This guy was also enjoyable. Made it in Mandarin Petite. I randomly bought two skeins. Where am I? Two skeins at like a random store on the island and she was the perfect piece. Like she just worked perfectly. I love this guy. I love the broken ribbing. Very, very strunen. 
I just think it's really classic. I think I need to make slightly more classics. I feel like a lot of the pieces I knitted this year were very like bold, like one show off pieces. I think I need to make pieces that blend into the background and look beautiful on me. I think I just need to make a little bit more subtle pieces maybe. I don't know. I feel like every day, I think I just need to make subtle everyday pieces that I can wear more on a regular basis, you know? Like, if I wore this every day, people would start noticing, and I need pieces that can, like, blend in and be like, oh, that's a basic. Like, I need something that's okay to be worn every day. So, hopefully, we can start doing that. I think at this end of the year, we kind of trickled down. We actually didn't make too many big pieces. I feel like the cardigan number eight was like one of my last big pieces yeah so i made this is the sophie scarf uh it's just like a really like when she first made it like her little sophie collection this is i knitted this in my taro milk tea yarn which is like low-key the best seller oh my god stop i look so gorgeous i should have worn this should have worn this more um but yeah, I just think it's gorgeous if you have just some leftover yarn you need to use up. I knitted this with Sun is Gone Tin Silk Mohair and the putty leftover that I had from the cardigan, <laughs> Sunday cardigan. And it's just, it's really dainty. I love the look of adding just like a mohair to just some really simple pieces. Like you can also wear this like as a headband, which I love doing. Because I made this in the small version. I would love to knit the medium version and make it like a black one, but then I also need to make a small version of the Sophie shawl. Like it's, it's a dangerous game I'm playing with myself. So I, I love this. No one judge me. It's my favorite, <laughs> my favorite look. Then this is my Sophie shawl, which I have yet to talk about. I think I got to talk about it in the next knitting podcast. I wore this so much. Oh my gosh, look, it's so cute, like wrapped around like this. Wait, could I wrap it like, oh, oh, she's a top now. <laughs> um, yeah, I knitted this with, I think I had some leftover um, Drops Kid Silk Mohair Light Beige. I don't know why I have so much leftover of that guy. Who knows why I have so much of it. Um, and just, I think one strand of the one strand that I used for the Ingrid sweater and then a random strand from... Um, Color Mart, I think Color Mart is really nice because you can just like add two fingering strands and you got like a DK weight. Like it's just super easy. It's so beautiful. <sighs> I need this guy in like every color, but we got to make different Sophie shawls, I think. I mean shawls. I need to make more shawls. Okay, stop. Uh, we get it. Okay, we get it. We understand. We have a problem. We have the honey wash bag. I made it. I finally added a lining to it. So... Hopefully I can put some stuff in here, but this guy is humongous. It is huge, but so beautiful. I need to make like a matching set and we'll do that hopefully in the future. But like this guy is actually kind of like a beast. No one tells me how big of a beast it is, but it is actually a beast to make. And then basic Oslo hat that I said looked like it wasn't going to fit me. And okay, sorry. I felt pressure. I couldn't put it on nice enough for you guys to look at it's Oh. I need time to organize my hair. Okay, but yeah, this is just the Oslo hat. I made it in, I think, the small adult, which probably should have been the medium adult, but I think we were running out of yarn at that point, <laughs> but it's fine. She is gorgeous. I am really happy with her and I wanna make more hats. I would love to make a red hat and a blue hat and a, gr and a brown hat. Dangerous, absolutely dangerous, so. Those are, that is crazy. That is about it for all of my big, like, petite knit, my favorite things knitwear pieces. I am so sorry if you guys wanted different stuff, but that is who I am. That is the collection I'm trying to collect is <laughs> petite knit, which is totally fine. I didn't include some of the little accessories that I made that are just from my collection. Yeah, so, like, looking back, it feels weird, like, Having just gone through all that, it doesn't feel like a lot, but looking at it, like, I made so many pieces this year. Like, the Ingrid 
Moby. We did the Oslo. Oh my gosh, I did the cardigan number eight. Gosh, we did so much knitting this year. And like, I am so excited. I have been like itching to start new things. Like look, I'm all ready for January 2023. I'm ready to see where next year takes us. I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday. Have a great new year. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Thank you so much for staying till the end of the video. I hope yeah, it was enjoyable. I hope you got some inspiration, got to see what I made. Uh, maybe you guys make it next year. And I'd love to see all your pieces. I hope this video doesn't make you feel like you have to knit a lot and you have to like feel like you gotta keep up with how much I knit. I know, I knit a lot and it is okay if you don't have as many pieces as I do because this is my job. So just don't forget to enjoy the process. Knitting is all about the process and just how it makes you feel. and. Um, don't think about like, oh, I need this piece. I need this piece like like don't feel like you have to make the newest things and like, you know, be on top of what everyone else is making. Just enjoy the knitting, enjoy buying the yarn because buying the yarn in itself is like a whole wonderful process and like knitting a whole wonderful process and then getting to enjoy the pieces that you knit is just just so beautiful and so nice. So just uh, try to enjoy those moments as much as possible because it's not a race, it's about the journey. And I'm excited to see what journey we get on next year. So thank you guys so much for watching. You guys know I'm on Patreon, we have a Discord. I'm on Instagram, we post on YouTube. Next year I'm going to be streaming. I know we were doing like a trial run in December. We will be streaming a little bit more frequently in the upcoming year. We're gonna be doing some new stuff. I'm excited for the Studio Ghibli collection to be coming out. For the entire year hopefully we can do someone suggested doing the egg neat cardigan cal so i think we should maybe motivate each other each other to do that and maybe we can get it um because i know i'm gonna need motivation for sure but yeah lots of exciting stuff i'm really excited to see where she goes i want to buy like so many more equipment to just kind of um upgrade upgrade typical bliss and we'll see what we can do there also in the future. We're just like looking into the future. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the new year and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.